Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. So for the past eight months or so, I've been working really hard on improving my figure drawing, my anatomy knowledge, and my ability to control perspective. And in this video, I wanna share with you this process and really showcase I guess the fruits of this labor and it's very interesting because I've had some experience obviously going in but there is really no limit to just how much you can improve and I also still have a really long way to go. So I'm at a point where it's fascinating to see the improvement but also knowing there is so much more to learn and I do want to share that with you. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the process in very broad terms. I'm not gonna explain everything I'm doing, just giving you the highlights. But generally speaking, I do want to talk about some of the growth I experienced in the last eight months or so, uh, and some of my insights from that. And I'm gonna pretty much free flow it. So what you see me do now is just placing uh, this kind of a wrapper. So imagine we're wrapping the entire figure in kind of a candy wrapper, something like that. I just wanna figure out where the entire shape sits. Uh, by marking up points, for example, the, the shoulder on the left and the head and the hand on the left and the elbow on the right, just to figure out my general proportions, make sure it all fits within my page. Uh, now, one of the big things I learned is to really slow down and allow the process its due focus and time and to really think about every shape I'm putting, every line I'm putting. Now a big part of this um, figure in, in particular and just generally speaking is perspective. You just saw me putting the center line for his chest. Uh, perspective and how the figure fits into that. For example, his torso is moving away from us. So I marked these cross contours to really show that. And you really have to learn of course, the basics of anatomy and how the body is structured, but also you want to learn how things act in space. That was the biggest thing for me. And once you learn to simplify the torso into, for example, the shoulder girdle and a simple cylinder, um, in this example for the, the rest of the area of the stomach and the, the obliques and all of that, all the way to the... Um, to the, uh, what do you call it, I forgot, the pelvis uh, area, uh, you simplify it into a simple cylinder, but you have to really think about, is it turning away from us, towards us, uh, is every limb, you have to really think about, is it moving in that direction, in this direction? If you look at the leg uh, on the right side, which is his left leg, and here I am making some corrections, which is always important, make sure the overall proportions still work. If you look at his left leg, which is to our right, I drew these cross contour lines lines around it to indicate that the upper part moves towards us while the bottom part moves away from us. And the beautiful thing about these kinds of figures is uh, this person is fairly close to us. So perspective really plays a major role here. If you look at the two legs, you can see the floor and you're kind of looking at it from above. Uh, what I love about this closeness to the subject is how uh, it makes it feel like a much more dynamic pose. For example, the, the leg on the right appears to be much larger than the one on the left due to the difference in distances. It makes perspective play a bit of a stronger role. Now, after I put in all of these um, anatomical details based on my observations, now I can layer on top of that the clothes. And notice how I put in that muscle. I, I believe that's called the ridge muscles, though I'm not sure it's an area I'm still studying. Uh, and you have to understand, learning anatomy in a more in-depth manner, as I've been doing for the last couple of months, it's really different from drawing from observation, something I'll, I'll talk about a bit more in, in the future. But basically, when you learn how things actually are, you gain actual knowledge, like anatomical knowledge, kind of like doctors learn. And this is what enables you to manipulate the body, to change things around, to uh, show it in different angles, and to really think about what things look like from different angles. When you're drawing from pure observation, you're kind of at the whim of whatever reference you can find. So if you can see it, you can draw it, and that's great. That's an important skill to have, I always encourage it. But in addition to that, you do want to continue developing your skill of really understanding the thing you're drawing. If you wanna to get to that level, like what I'm trying to do, I have to put way more emphasis on learning the actual shapes of things. So for example, you learn how the what, what, how the pec muscles look and how they wrap around the chest. And this is how I got that curvy line that you saw me putting in earlier. Now I learned a lot about the fingers and how they're structured uh, and the fact that they're, the upper part is more based on knuckles while the lower part is where the fat and rounder shapes are. 
Um, one thing I'm still I haven't dove deep enough into again is the physics of clothes and folds, which I do know um, how to control in a way, and I do know how to draw. But diving deeper on that, uh, same similarly to how I dove deep on. Uh, anatomy. Uh, so now you see me putting in the, the pants above the already established shapes and it's so much easier. Doing this stage is so much easier when you've properly established the perspective of the limbs and of the different parts uh, of the sketch. And by the way, just a word about this pose, I love it. I just found it randomly on Pinterest and I loved it, the dynamic feel of it, how like the person goes wait here and like pulling a knife. It's really, really cool. Um, I love action poses. Uh, now just to bring it out more, I decided to ink this. I normally don't do that, but I wanted it to be more visible and to give you somewhat of a more final result. Now, I'm actually quite happy with how the line work turned out here, too. Uh, I really think it has a good touch and there's a nice line variation and width and all of that. Now, one major thing, and I talked about this in the past, is gesture. How can you lay down all of the anatomy and make things look three-dimensional and solid and really stable while maintaining the dynamic feel of it and the movement? And a part of it is really being able to find those curves and change things around and exaggerate things when necessary. Um, it's something that is a constant practice, like I never stop learning how to do this. It's always something uh, that I'm thinking about and thinking about improving. Um, I think it has to do with just improving your observation skills in general. This is where observation does play a role, um, I think, because you recognize the overarching curves of the body. This entire thing ideally should fit within a very... Uh, flowy line. So there is there should be one or two curves that represent the entire motion. And a big part of it is that weight on the left knee um, because he's shifting his weight over that and, and it's going to move to the right knee in a moment. Um, and a lot of it is the, the motion of the hand, the arm that's pulled back, his left arm pulled back to pull out the, the knife. Uh, so that's a, another really important part, which I think would ideally be on the other side of the body so you can more easily take it out. But uh, in any case, you know, that's that's it's a model and someone telling them what to do. So, uh, yeah. And uh, I think this is pretty much it. A lot to learn. Always room to improve. Always room to grow when it comes to perspective and figures. When you start with perspective and you focus on cubes and cylinders and simple shapes, that's all fine and dandy. But once you get to the more complex shapes, it really is a step up and it's all about repetition if I can leave you with one thing is that like repeat more and more and more and more and more and practice more and more and more and it's fine it doesn't have to hold you back from doing the thing that you love like painting or doing other things but and by the way I forgot the right side of the shirt to indicate it properly with the pen and ink but in any case all about repetition again if you want to master these very technical skills that are technical but also very artistic you really need to practice your repetition that's the main part so i hope that you find this this video helpful and now we can wrap it up so thank you so much for watching i hope seeing this inspires you to get on this journey it is very challenging and the beginning is very humble you have to start from the basics from the fundamentals drawing three-dimensional shapes drawing things um, in multiple angles, working on your ability to rotate things in your mind's eye. And it is very different from drawing strictly from observation, where when you're drawing from observation, you really have no limits. You're basically limited to your ability to observe things, to measure accurately. Um, but with this, you really need to start developing an understanding of the underlying anatomy, of perspective, of different shapes that are very either simple or very uh, complex in perspective and knowing how to let them all work together and you combine that with a bit of gesture to spice things up and keep things dynamic. So I hope that helps. I just want to remind you that if you're here uh, because of my watercolor content, which is most of my audience, be sure to check out the link in the description box to my frustration-free watercolor course. I am running a discount of 15% um, off, so that's 24 bucks instead of 29 for my frustration-free watercolor course, kind of a Christmas special, so be sure to check that out. And also check out my drawing courses, no discount at the moment, but just letting you know. Thank you so much, and I will see you again in the next vid.